Honestly, I really want everyone to give a round of applause to Richard McCarthy, please. I not only respect him, but uh, he has a lot of knowledge and wisdom and a lot of things to contribute to the sport. Yahao Shan was going to be here. He just uh, finished the World Junior Championship yesterday in Slovakia. He played pretty, pretty good. Um, he's doing a test for the university. He had the surprise when he arrived that his dad told him he got a test tomorrow at 8 o'clock. So he's not going to be here with us, but uh, all of you should have one of these, okay? So um, first of all, I want to tell you that uh, you have a pen. I want you to take notes. That's why I gave you some uh, room in your program so you can take your notes because after Two, three months, you will not remember anything of this. And Richard will teach us about rules, change of rules in the sport, and other stuff. At any moment when you, when we are talking about anything, please feel free to raise your hand and ask a question, okay? It's very important. So, uh, through the years, I have you know, discover that serve and receive is the most important thing of the game. Ironically, you see players practicing and never do serve and receive. They just start doing the drills directly. And serve and receive, just think about this, a point starts with a serve and a receive. So, we should really know about uh, serve and receive. Um, and because we are sensitive to your needs, everyone needs help in, in serving and receiving, we are doing this clinic today. So the first thing I want to talk about is methods to improve reading of the ball. Many of you have told me, how can you know what spin is coming? And let me tell you, when we talk about reading the ball, it means a lot of things. It means to know what's coming, not only what type of spin is coming, but how much spin is coming, the height, the curves, the trajectories, the, the bounces, and all that includes uh, reading of the ball. So, I have one article here that is some butterfly, but I made a copy. And I want to go to uh, each one of these points. If you go to the second page, the first one is just the contents, list of, list of contents. The second one starts with methods to improve the reading of the ball. And I want your participation, please, and I may ask some questions. So, when we talk about reading of the ball, last Monday, you asked Eric Prusiewicz. You came to me and says, I don't see the difference when he serves backspin or topspin. Then Eric was kind enough to come and do all the serves for 10 minutes to, to leave until you start seeing, right? So, let me ask who who can tell me how can you distinguish first type of a spin? How can you know what type of a spin is coming? Not all at the same time, please. The racket, what is that? When the racket hits the ball, server. Again? When the server puts the racket on the Watching ball. Watching the movement of the arm and the racket at the moment of contact. Is that right? So that's the most important one, the first one, you can see on your second page here, it says watch the movement of the opponent's arm and back when contacting the ball. Now, there are players that are very, how can you say, deceiving. They have very deceiving serves and they do all kinds of movements. Actually, I've been looking the, now in the World Championships, guys, they, they do, now they're serving, and they do all kinds of stuff. And all this is the ceiling movements, so you don't know what type of spin is coming, right? So the first one would be watching the opponent's arm and the movement of the arm and the racket at the moment of the contact. Now, what would it be another way to know what type of spin is coming? If you're really in the seat, you can watch how it hits the table and how it comes out and goes up. If you cannot read, you're very deceiving. Wait till it bounces and watch which way it goes up or out. That's true, but a little bit late, right? Well, yeah, but I 
I'm saying if you're really being deceived. Are, are, are we listening? If you don't know what's coming, the type of bounce, and I will say the flight pattern, will tell us if it's mainly back speed or top speed, right? Maybe the trajectory. However, you, it's late. It's yeah. too late. But I know. But you don't have any any other choice, right? Mm -hmm. Trajectory. Trajectory. Like yes. How it, how it floats in. Okay. Good. Yes. Please. All right. If you if you're going to judge by the bounce on the table, what is the difference between the bounce on the table between the underspin ball and the top spin ball from That's the first question. bounce Very to the question. second bounce? Very good question. Top spin bounces quicker. It jumps, jumps forward. And yeah, it has it has a different rhythm. Mm -hmm. The ball, the ball is, is a quicker bounce with the top spin. The underspin hits and floats a bit, so it's a little slower rhythm on the bounce. And to do that, you may have to take a half a step back, but and back up a little bit, give yourself a little more time if you're going to judge that way. But you can tell by the height of the net and the rhythm of the bounce. It's definitely when an underspin ball hits, it'll be a slower rhythm between the first bounce and the second bounce and the top spin. And yes, usually you take one step back because you're saying, wow, what's coming, you know? You're waiting a little bit. Okay, another way. So we have watching the arm and the opponent uh, racket at the moment of contact. You know, distinguishing the flight pattern, the bounce. Silent. That's another one. We're, we're going to leave that at the end, okay? That's that's very, very <coughs> advanced and difficult one, but it's it's really good. Okay, anybody else? Larry? For uh, balls that don't have much spin, you can watch for the label. And, and you see, all these things are here. So, it's a good exercise. I always ask players, can you see that tag? And you cannot see it when it's really spinning, you can see it when it's very little spin or when it's dead. Now let me tell you something incredible. In the 70s they used similar color, the same color, red and red. And people used to, players used to play with, actually I did, phantom on one side, pips, and, and regular on the other side. You flip the racket under and then you serve with the smooth or with the phantom. In China, they told me to put the tag on this side. So, can you see the tag, Josh? It goes like this, and players, when they step around, they don't have a way to... Just, just think about how advanced is this. But looking at the tag is very important. So, I encourage you to try to see the tag all the time. All the time. Okay? That's very important. Another method to read the ball. What type... And and looking the tag tells us maybe how much spin it is, more than what type. We're talking about two things. What type of spin and the amount of spin is a very different thing, okay? So, what would it be another one? You can look at where the ball bounces regarding the net. If it's close to the net, it's usually under spin. That's not, I don't think that's true. It can be close to the net, but it can be top spin. I have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> You're my friend, but I have to say it. Yeah, it can be here, top spin and back spin. That, that's not a... I think, I think one of the caveats to that is, is probably what you're experiencing. At the lower levels, you're probably correct. Most lower level players have trouble making a short top spin. Yes. But any, any advanced player can make any spin to any, any location. So as you move up, you can't rely on that. Yeah. A lot of times at the lower levels, you can figure that they can't make a short time. Okay. All the things that we've been talking about, how to read the ball, are in this article. I, I, I really encourage you to read it. Maybe you, some of you or all of you have already listened. Listen to the sound of, con of contact. Very different. I want you to close your eyes. All of you, please. And close your eyes. And That's hitting contact. Versus, listen to this. So close your eyes and tell me what I'm doing, okay? Josh? Josh. Close your eyes. Yeah. Mark? Again? That's good, I think. Again, Mark? 
Hitting contact or brushing contact? Randy, close your eyes. Okay. What was that? See the difference? And that's why, if I'm okay, if I'm right, they banned it. Selling at the same time of service? Or? It's, it's not banned, and there's no rule against it. There is a rule against disturbing your opponent. Okay. And if, if it's excessive, the umpire can call that. But there is no automatic rule about stepping. I mean, because is this bothersome or is that bothersome? You know, it's, it's strictly an umpire's call. Do you know what I'm doing? Look, look and tell me if you can hear. At the same time. But the, uh, Richard, there was never a rule? Yes. There was never in the 80s or 90s? So you don't. So you don't. Yeah, it may have been at one time, it's not now. So you don't hear. So when I, in the 90s, okay, well, 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 early 80s. The, the, the reason the rule was put in many years ago, and then I, you. I was changed, was in the days of two different colors, so the same, same color. color. Same color. The only way you could yeah. tell which side they were hitting with. Sound. was stamping the feet, and they would not, not just stamp on the serve, sometimes they stamp as they play. Hmm. So they, they, they banned that for a while. Current rules, I don't believe there's any rule in the, in the game that specifically says you can't stamp on a serve. You that's cannot make noise and disturb your opponent. Am I that's, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, Randy had a comment. Well, well, I, I'm, I'm, do you personally stamp your foot when you play? I used to do it when I used two different rubbers. Not anymore because I don't need the sound thing. But I used to do it all the time. And exactly. At the same time. So, yeah. But like Richard is saying, it's not banned, but someone who really knows that you are doing it with that purpose, it may complain and maybe the referee. Okay. Any questions so far with this first? Uh, yes, just. disturb your opponent and when they're getting ready to hit you can't go ah! <laughs> or anything no you can't and the same thing's true here you're getting served you're making noise if it's loud enough it startles your opponent is this the is this the rule? obviously the umpire is going to call it any when, when someone speaks i uh, want to invite you to listen so everybody can learn or even if someone says something that is not right we learn okay so any comment or question <laughs> Any comment or questions so far with methods to to read them all? And if I'm missing something, I would like to learn. Just one quick thing to think about. All of the things we were saying is watch contact with the ball and the racket. Watch the bounce. Watch this. Watch this. How you watch is very important. If you stand up high, you are looking down. Your perspective is not very good. You have a much better vision when you get lower and see the ball coming from this direction. So particularly if you're having trouble reading spin, get down. Get down to where you can actually see that contact. You're not looking down at it like this. You can actually see a ball spin coming at you instead of looking down. Most players stand too upright and it hurts their serving turn because they don't have the same vision. And I would say that's good even for everything in the game. Yeah. Blocking, very yeah. different blocking here than, you know, being there. Any comments or questions before we go into the next? Um, uh, can that bring that? Can, and then we go with can a pinhole grip be more deceiving than a regular grip as far as disguising which way you're going to serve? No. Like Adrian yeah. served. Okay. <laughs> My answer to that is this. It has more wrist movement. That's yeah. why now we grab the racket like this. But it has nothing to do with deceiving. Okay. Deceiving can be shake can, pen holder, Danny similar style, and still very deceiving. deceiving. It has more wrist pen holder, much more. That's why shake hands came to this grip to have the same, you know, so range right. of right. movement. Almost. 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 He's a pen holder. So <laughs> almost. Yeah, you're right. You're right. More. Almost. It is true. It is true. Uh, yes. if, you, if you have to play a player that does a lot of motion with their blade or throws the ball up high and does a lot of movement, get down low and only watch the contact. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't watch the ball yes. and don't watch the blade do all this movement. Just watch it touch. Yeah, all the other stuff is to the seat. 